So in this video, I'll be sharing over 15 ways to make money with Blender. It's a resource for anyone who wants to turn 3D or their art into a living. And by the end of it, I want you to feel like this is not some far off dream, but an attainable career that you can take seriously starting today. Now, honestly, there's tons of ways to do it, but a lot of these methods require a lot of time. So I wanted to present to you some of the simplest ways to turn Blender into a money making tool. Obviously, our core business is digital. I mean, we're on a computer all day, right? So digital products are kind of a logical conclusion to that and make the most sense to get started with. And assuming you're already creating artworks, the simplest way to make money with that is to just sell them. You're already making them anyway, so why not turn them into a small profit? The issue with that is that digital art is very easy to just download. You can right click an image on a website, press save as, and there you have it. You now get the art that you wanted to sell for free. You know, besides maybe some people who are willing to sort of sponsor you by buying the art, most people will just download it for free. I mean, this is why NFTs fill. There's no real intrinsic value to digital art because there's no way for you to be the sole owner of it. Now, what you can do, however, if you want to go down this path is offer up the image on your website or whatever platform you're using only through another medium. And what I mean by that is presenting the artwork, for example, on a photo of a monitor. So not the entire artwork as a single image, which you can download, but instead only showing it on a monitor, which basically doesn't allow people to download it. Or for example, you can use a phone mockup with the image on your phone. Not talking about monitors and phones, a great way to make a little bit of money on the side is to create images which you can use as a background for your phone or a background on your desktop, basically creating cool looking, usually abstract backgrounds, which are nice quality and people can download to use on any of their devices. You can even make these animated, so for example, tools like Wallpaper Engine allow you to take animated images and use these as backgrounds for your desktop, which is really, really cool. And also on phones nowadays, I believe you can get animated backgrounds or lock screen images. So there's definitely money to be made by creating cool looking pieces for digital devices. Another great method is stock footage. And this kind of has a bad rep because stock footage always feels so cheap, but there's tons of 3D art in stock footage. This could be icons, abstract visual, Visuals, medical visualizations, both animated or static, icon packs, images. And the great thing about stock footage is that it almost never has to be photo real. So you can just create fun little images. And if you just Google stock footage and then go to any of these well-known websites and then type in 3D, you'll get hundreds, if not thousands of results of popular stock footage images, which you can use as inspiration for your own stock footage. And if you feel like there's no money to be made here, Shutterstock, for example, claims they have currently already given out $1 billion in payouts for their stock footage licensing. So there's definitely money to be made. And as a bonus, most of these platforms don't have any exclusivity. So if you make one image, you can just put it up on tons of different stock footage websites and, you know, get money from all those different places. Now I realize, and I have to be honest, that a lot of these things won't make you rich overnight and probably not by themselves either. It's sort of the sum of the many that makes the total thing worth it. You need to get the ball rolling. And I like to call this the snowball effect. You probably know it, but basically a snowball, if you roll it down a mountain, it starts off small and it starts accumulating more and more snow until it grows you Huge. It starts rolling faster because of gravity and creates momentum and size. And this is very similar to that. So a lot of these methods that I'm currently showing and will be showing in the rest of this video by themselves are not worth it that much. But if you do a lot of these different things together, it adds up. 10 of these small revenue streams, each paying you two to $300 a month, that's two to 3K a month. And that's pretty decent income, I think. Honestly, it's how I do it too, right? I don't have just one single income stream. I think I have close to 10 nowadays, and I'm always looking to add in more and more different income streams because that's sort of the hard thing with this 3D art or art in general. It's making enough money steadily for you to pay the bills month in, month out. So you want to get as much diversification of income to make that as easy as possible. All right, so let's continue with some more methods. The next one I want to talk about is custom art requests. Now, this is a lot more labor intensive than the previous ones, but it can be a very, very profitable one. So basically this relies on people asking you or commissioning you to make a certain art piece. This can be anywhere from very strange art. 
Hababa. Hababa Tagada. To just, you know, a nice, great looking piece because people like your art style. Now, the next one is add ons. And yes, these can be very, very time intensive as well, but you can also make very, very simple add ons. So if you, for example, have created a solution that you feel would benefit many others using Blender, you can simply put this up on Blender Market and have a few sales of that every month as well. Now, then we have 3D models or selling 3D models. I would say only do this if it doesn't cost more time. It's very hard to get started with selling 3D models. And if you look at platforms like Turbo Squid or CG Trader, they're so immensely oversaturated that basically getting a foothold in there is impossible. However, what you can do is that if you have decent looking models that you already created for other projects and you completely made them yourselves, that you can just offer them up in sort of asset packs, right? Maybe you have a bunch of interior models, which are great for arch vis visualizations, which you can just offer up on like Gumroad or Blender Market, for example. And every once in a while, this will generate a sale as well, netting you some extra income. Next up, we have material bundles. Again, this sort of relies on you already having created a bunch of materials. So if you don't have this, this might not be as useful, but assuming you're creating art, you're probably also creating custom materials. And if these materials are useful to other people, you can sell them in material packs. A great, great example of this is Ducky 3D's real-time materials, which, you know, he already made tons of these materials prior to starting this add-on and then decided to turn this into a simple add-on, which will allow you to use all of these procedural materials materials. That's a great way of turning something you're already working on basically, or something you already got started on into something that's now generating thousands of dollars each month because it's selling like crazy on Blender Market. Now, another thing is project files with useful setups. Usually when I make a project, I run into very specific problems, which I create niche solutions for. So for example, I had some projects lying around, which I needed to render and rendering became really slow and taking up all my time because that's sort of locked in my computer and I only have one. <laughs> I wanted to make it faster to render these things. So I decided to look into render settings, create the best possible render settings, and then use that for all my future renders. That maybe took me a few hours to do. And then I just turned it into a product, which I now offer up on a blender market as well. And to this day, I think it made me well over $1,500. That definitely can work. And it's something that came into existence because I already made the product for myself anyways. And it was just very easy for me to sell it to other people and to have them benefit from this same solution. Now, finally, in the digital products category, we have geometry nodes tools. This is mainly useful if you actually know geometry nodes because getting to understand geometry nodes and learning it to a level which allows you to create a product with it is actually quite hard. But if you already know geometry nodes, it's very easy to create custom tools. And if we look at Cartesian Caramel, for example, he has dozens of these geometry nodes tools, which he just puts up on Gumroad as well. And you can just buy them for a couple of dollars each. Each of these tools might be useful to a handful of people or maybe even hundreds of people if it's a very useful tool, which allows you to sell it. So these were some of the ways to turn digital products into a way to make income. And if you're like me chronically online and making a living exclusively through the internet, having proper protection is extremely important. NordVPN provides that much needed safety for just a few bucks a month. With NordVPN, you can browse securely, block malware, and access content from anywhere in the world. Their Threat Protection Pro offers advanced digital protection from any online threat, even when downloading files, clicking links, or accessing the internet. And to be honest, this is the most important reason for me to use NordVPN. If I'm traveling, accessing a Wi-Fi point somewhere, or I'm simply on the go, I want to be sure that whenever I access work-related platforms like Gmail or YouTube, my data and privacy are 100% safe from being spied on. And as a bonus, starting from their plus plans and up, you also get access to their cross-platform password manager and data breach scanner that will notify you of any data breaches where your personal information has been leaked. Right now, NordVPN is offering an exclusive deal. Two years plus four extra months for free, plus up to 20 gigabytes of Sally, their new eSIM service for travelers. This guarantees safe access to the web while you're traveling in over 150 countries worldwide. Use my code Kaizen Tutorials and visit NordVPN slash Kaizen Tutorials to get this amazing deal. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee.
Now, before we continue, I want to point out that having an online presence, even if it's just a very small one, is very, very important to all of these methods. There's tons of people making art, there's tons of people making products, but they just can't be found online because they have no online presence. So using social media to your benefit by creating an Instagram account, by creating a TikTok, by creating a YouTube account even, allows you to present your tools, art, and products to the masses and get exposure for it. So if I, for example, reflect this on myself, I obviously have a quite large following online, but even in the early days when I had a smaller following online, having an online presence meant that people found my stuff, that people found my products, which I had over on Gumroad. I have tons of project files over on Gumroad and people started buying those. Maybe it made me just 100 or $200 a month, but still without this online presence, I probably would have sold nothing. So investing in an online presence through social media with, for example, an art profile, definitely definitely makes a difference in being able to do this for a living. Now, I'm not saying go do exactly what I'm doing, do tutorials, do courses, because that's an insane time sink, but just being there online makes a difference. Trust me. And that brings us to physical products. Now, it might feel kind of weird to talk about physical products when we're using 3D tools like Blender, but it's actually a very, very profitable avenue to make money with 3D. Now, the first way I would recommend to do this is through 3D printing. If you don't know how to do 3D printing, I would advise you to watch this video by Keep Making. It's a very good introduction on how to use Blender to create 3D printable files. But once you get the grasp of that, it's very simple to create models which you can sell on marketplaces like Thanks, which is specifically catered to 3D printing. You could do fun 3D printing objects, which could be gimmicks or optical illusions or toys or characters from famous movies and games. You could do useful 3D printing, which could be components for machines or objects that get failures. It could even be home living goods like vases or cutlery or maybe a plate or some cup to put pens in, for example, for on your desk. You can get as creative as you want and it can be very, very simple shapes that will allow you to make hundreds of dollars through selling these as STL files or selling them as actual 3D printed objects if you own a 3D printer. Now, another great way to do physical products, and in this case, we're reaching back to artworks, is to do physical representations of those artworks. So if you make art, you can turn that into a physical copy of it. So you're not selling the artwork, you're just selling the physical copy. You could do this through display, for example, to get a nice metal version, or you could sell prints, which have been printed on nice high quality paper. You could do stickers, you could do buttons. Basically, you can turn a lot of your artworks into fun little physical objects that people can buy if they like your art. And physical artworks are great because it allows people to own your art. So if you, for example, do a limited edition print with like 10 total images, there's only 10 copies of that specific artwork, which makes owning one of those 10 copies a lot more unique compared to just having an image on your computer, which technically everybody could download from the internet. So doing physical copies is the perfect way to turn some of your art, which you already have lying around, into, you know, a way to make money. Now, next up, we have something very different, and that is monetizing yourself. <laughs> I'm not recommending selling your body here, but if you're good at what you do, then there's definitely a chance that other people are interested in learning how to do it themselves. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing tutorials or courses because these require large amounts of time to do, believe me, I know. But then again, they are a great way of turning your knowledge into a profit. So if you have something to teach, definitely check out doing tutorials or courses, but I wouldn't consider these simple methods. An actual simple way to do this is offering up mentorship or one-on-one -on -one guidance. Again, this would rely on you having some kind of social presence because people need to know who you are before they're willing to invest into you. But if you have some kind of social following, asking people in your audience if they're interested into being mentored or guided by you to become better artists, for example, is a very, very lucrative way to make money. And it's also quite easy for you as an artist to do, right? Because you already have this knowledge. You only need to share it with the people who are interested in learning it to make money and turn your knowledge into a profit, for example. Now, another way to do this that sort of circumvents you teaching people is going through platforms like Fiverr or Upwork. You could, you know, technically freelance there and 
that's definitely something you could do as well to make money, but it's quite hard to find clients. But if you're really, really good at, for example, rigging, you can simply offer up to rig a character for just a couple of bucks. So let's say it takes you an hour to do a very decent rig for a character. You can offer up this surface on Fiverr or Upwork and just have people buy this surface. They send over a character, you rig it in an hour and you charge them money for it. Now the next method is called crowdfunding and basically it relies on people giving you money to do what you like to do. There's a good chance that if you make art, people enjoy it and you might not want to sell your art, but instead you just want to share it with the world for free. There's a good chance though that people are thoroughly enjoying it and finding value in that enjoyment. So you can always ask people to give you money to continue making art. This is especially done through something like Patreon, for example, where you just say, okay, I'm making these art pieces and I wanna keep doing that. And if you enjoy the art that I'm making and sharing with you guys for free, then send me over a couple of bucks a month and support me over on Patreon. Now I have a Patreon myself, but I use it more or less as a way for people to download my project files. But you can do a very different way instead where you just say, say, okay, I'm sharing some of the insights, some of the backgrounds of what I'm doing. I'm showing you my daily routine, for example. I'm showing you how this artwork was made with some behind the scenes shots. And basically you're giving them an insight into the art that you're already making. You're already spending that time anyways, and people are willing to pay you for that. And finally, we have affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing again, sort of relies on you having some sort of social presence, but if you're already doing art and you're sharing that online, there's a good chance you're using some add-ons for Blender, for example, each time you make your art. So let's say, for example, you do character animation, each time you do the character, you do the rigging, for example, you use Autorig Pro. Well, now whenever you post a new artwork, why don't you just include a link that says this character was rigged with Autorig Pro and I truly enjoy it. And if you want to get it yourself, get it through this link and you just make sure that you're an affiliate for the product. And at that point, whenever you post a new artwork, this will generate some sales and this will generate some income. Again, this is very much a snowball kind of principle. So the more links you have out there, the more sales you generate each month. And over time, this will add up eventually turning into a sort of decent amount of money each month. And that's sort of what this all boils down to. Don't just do one thing. If you want to make a living doing this whole 3D or art thing, make sure you dive diversify your income as much as possible, set up as much small revenue streams as possible, and together this will add up to your total sum of income, which will make sure you get a living each month. And if one month the Patreon fills, or one month the add-on sales fill, or one month you're not selling as much digital art, then you still have all of the other revenue streams to sort of cover your basis. Now, if you can't wait to dive into this, but you're kind of unsure about your skills as a 3D artist and want to learn how to become a better one, I would recommend checking out this video right here that will show you the best way to learn Blender.